So welcome back to Satori Graphics and today we have more interactive content that you can follow along with and try to work out what changes are going to be made and of course, you know, learn something along the way. And for today's video, I'm going up against Freepik. And if you don't know already, Freepik is a place where you can download free templates, vectors and so forth and hashtag not sponsored. I just thought it'd be interesting to download things from Freepik and then kind of improve them using graphic design principles. Now it's great being able to show people how a design looks but even more impressive if they can actually experience it too. And this leads to them understanding how it's going to behave. And so learn more about Framer later in today's video and how to show off your designs. The first example today is a fashion kind of web page or landing page or website. And this is pretty much how it was downloaded from Freepik apart from there was no actual model or woman on the downloadable version. I had to source that myself, which I did from Pixabay. So I'm gonna make a whole lot of changes to this design and as we've done before in this format of video, what would you change looking at this design right here? What kind of graphic design principles would you apply and what stands out as just being wrong from a design perspective? The first thing that I really wanna change right off the bat is the typography on the left hand side here. Now serif fonts can look good when we're talking about fashion, but for this style of design and also concerning the lettering of the bags that she's holding, I think a sans serif font would actually do a lot better here and it would be a more modern and more up to date. But as I said, serif fonts can actually work when we're talking about fashion and kind of high end brands. And then I'm going to give this typography a kind of splash of color and I'm going to take hues from the focal point, which is the woman herself. So black and red. So we've got some nice contrasting color on this typography and also the fact that the sail is in red really highlights to that part of the design. This is also called emphasis. And also you could say it's hierarchy as well. Yeah, sometimes graphic design principles do merge into each other. And then lastly, for the typography section, I'm going to also put this lower part of the text into black as well. That just ties everything together on the left here pretty nicely. Okay, so what else can we do to this design to really elevate it to that kind of expert or professional level? We do have some call to actions here where it says shop now and also home. And they are kind of in a muted brown, nasty kind of color. So let's give that a spot of red as well. Yeah, that looks a lot better and it does emphasize that these are some points of interest on the design. The shop now is definitely a call to action and also the button at the top is just telling us what page we're on on the website. And lastly, there was an aspect of the design background that I just wanted to change up a tiny bit. And that is to remove the white area on the left here because I thought it was too busy. And I think when I removed it, it emphasizes the text kind of box here on the left, this area of typography. It's really, really emphasized and it's just a lot neater to the eye. And so here is the Satori version of the design and here is the original version of the design from Freepik. There are probably more changes that could be made and so forth, but I just quickly went through today's designs to make this video. So the next design is a poster, and this one is going to be somewhat subjective. And it is a pretty neat poster to be honest in the first place. But there are a few things that I personally would do to change this. But what would you do to change the design? What would you address to elevate it to different heights? So firstly, I've gone ahead and I've increased the space between each of these symbols, these geometric symbols. I did think they were too tightly packed together. And so I've given them more room to breathe. And I've also decreased the overall size of this part of the design. Furthermore, I've changed the font because the original was a condescended sans serif font, much like Beebus. And I do like Beebus, but I don't think it worked in this situation. So I changed that up to a custom font that I've actually made and that is going to be on sale at some point in 2021. But I've also added some hierarchy to the text on the right. I have the subheading, which is in a bold and a bit larger font. And then below we have the body text, which is thinner and also smaller. And then here I moved the top subheading over to the left and I've aligned everything. I just think this looks neater at the moment and has more room to breathe and it's not so kind of busy on the eyes, if that makes sense. So what would you do next to this design? Or do you think it's fine as it is? And to be honest, it does look all right as it is now, but there's something that I personally wanted to do, something I thought when I first glanced at this design. 
and that is I wanted to add some color, but I wanted to do it in a kind of intelligent way. And as you can see, I've just added one shape in the top right corner with the orange, and then I've linked that down with the main typography in the bottom left. Now I think this poster looks a lot more interesting now and it also looks neater. And then when we set it side by side to the original, you can make up your own mind, but for me personally, I do prefer my layout and my design. But again, this kind of design where it's more of a kind of artistic poster is going to be subjective. The third design again is a poster and this free pick download was actually pretty good as it was. And I'm not going to change anything here because I'm just going to illustrate something to you which is a fundamental graph design principle that we are going to look at later in the video. On this poster, the top left section of typography here, the area that I've highlighted with this pink box, there is a graph design principle going on here. Well, there actually are many graph design principles. And we're not talking about hierarchy, we're not talking about contrast, we're not talking about emphasis. But there is something else here that is going on. I know it's not alignment either. Can you work out what this is? It is a very important aspect of graphic design. It's something many designers actually overlook or they just do it subconsciously without even realizing it. And that is proximity. This primarily is just a technique of organization. By grouping elements of information that belong together and then separating them from those that are not associated, you can provide a logical system of organization that lets your audience understand and locate parts of your design that actually matter to them. It's not only visually appealing, but it's just organized and it allows the reader to navigate around your design properly. So if I exaggerate the fact that there's no proximity being used on this second design, you can see how disjointed everything looks. And yet this is an exaggerated example but when you're designing something, you do want to consider proximity and what, what elements of your design actually go together as a kind of a family or a group and what kind of relations do they have together. And so with proximity in mind, let's move on to the next design, which is an infographic. This is exactly how I downloaded the infographic from Freepik. Can your eye for design work out what's going on here and what's wrong and what would you change to this design? The first thing I did was to change the background color to a more of a darker navy blue. I just thought the previous blue was too bright and it didn't allow the elements on the design to actually stand out properly. So that was the very first thing that I did. And just jumping ahead, I'm gonna show pretty much all of the changes that I've made. So when regarding proximity, one of the best tips that you could apply is to use negative space. In using negative space, you allow the groups room to breathe that are associated with each other. As an example, the bottom left, when I have that one, two, three, four, they are smaller now, but they have more room and more space to actually be linked as one group. And then the data on the bottom right is together, and then all the information in the top right and top left as well. I also made some changes with the actual style of the data on the right, and I've used some hierarchy in the top left and top right with white and also light blue colors. Finally, setting them side by side and with a few more changes, here is my design and here is the design from Freepik. Yes, I could work on this design more so, but these are some fundamental changes that did need to be made. If you can see on the right, everything is just cramped together and it just looks too busy and overwhelming. An infographic needs to have the information displayed efficiently and so the viewer can just easily move to one space to another. So when regarding an infographic, proximity is probably one of the most important things that you're going to consider, as well as, of course, other graph design principles. Now, I know many of you guys are really digging this kind of content, and I enjoy making it because it allows me to express how graphic design should be undertaken using these basic fundamental principles. But so far, the videos have been more broad and they haven't been narrowed down to a specific topic. If you would like to see a specific topic undertaken in this kind of format, do drop a comment down below. Now, interactive prototyping is the best way to communicate your app and your website designs. The sponsor of today's video, Framer, is a no-code, free-to-use tool making it easy for anyone to become a prototyper. So you can import your existing work and quickly swap out your static elements for pre-built interactive components. This includes things like sliders that actually do slide, and inputs that can be filled, as well as buttons that can actually be clicked. Building out a full user flow is super simple as well. You can just link screens, buttons, and menu items, and pretty soon you will have a prototype that clearly communicates your vision to whoever you want to show it to. 
Now sign up for free by visiting framer.com forward slash Satori. That link is down in the description box below, so do give it a try if you are a web or app developer. And if you do want to learn something else today, click a video on screen. And until next time, design your future today. Peace. Oh, 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 o